Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 48th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to check out the call by value method of calling functions. So we are going to continue with our discussion on functions and uh, as you can see using code blocks I have saved a file. I have given it the name call underscore by underscore value. It has the dot c extension and I have some code uh, in this file. Right, so on line 1 I have the header file and then I have a couple of functions and I am putting some code in the main function. And uh, before we try to understand what this code is and add in some more lines of code to this program, let's uh, first know what we are going to do in this program, right? So I'll have two integers and I'll uh, give them some values and then using a function called swap in the program, I'm going to try to swap the values of the integers, right? So as you can see in the main function, I have two integers here. One's called A, the, other's one, the other one's B and I've given them values too. And using the function swap in this program, I'm going to try to swap the values of A and B. So A initially has 10 and B has 5. But after executing the swap function, I would want A to have the value 5 and B to have the value 10. Right? And we're going to see uh, what the call by value method is you know, through, through this. Right? So let's understand uh, the code that's already there. On line 2, I have my function declaration statement. So the name of the function is swap. And since it's not going to return any integer or any value, I have placed a void keyword before the function name. In the parameter list for the function, I have the int keyword twice because it's going to receive two integer arguments. And then I have placed a semicolon to terminate the function declaration statement. On line three, I have main and within the curly braces for main, I have a few lines of code. So on line five, I've declared two integers a and b. On line 6, I've given A the value 10. On line 7, I've given B the value 5. And on line 8, I have a printf statement that's going to display the values of A and B on screen before the swapping operation has been performed or before the swap function has been called. So uh, the statement is printf with the double quotes I have before swapping. And since we're going to print two integers, I have the percentage D format specified twice. And I have a new line escape sequence just before the closing double quotation mark for printf. And then of course the variables a and b and then on the line on the next line that is on line line nine i have called the swap function with a and b as arguments right so a and b are both integers and they have been passed as arguments to the swap function and then after this function has been called after this function has been invoked i have another statement on line 10 that's going to display the values of a and b after swap has finished its uh, execution right so after the outside the main function, I have uh, the definition for swap and uh, I have X and Y as my formal parameters in this program, right? So the value of A is going to be copied into X and the value of Y is going to be copied into, uh, sorry, the value of B is going to be copied into Y. Now let's get inside the swap function and let's uh, try to change the values of A and B. And to do that, I need a temporary variable and I'm going to call that temp. It's also going to be an integer. And I'll give the value of x to temp, right? So a and b are not known here. a and b are known through x and y, right? So uh, what if I just type? It should be temp is equal to x. On the next line, I'll give x the value that's contained in y. And on the next line, I'll give y the value that is stored in temp, right? So a has the value 10. That value is copied into x, so x is 10. And then y gets the value of b which is 5. So x is 10 and y is 5 and uh, when this statement executes temp is equal to x, temp will get the value 10, right? And then on line 16 I have x is equal to y, so x is going to get the value 5 and then y is going to get the value that's stored in temp which is 10. So the values of x and y would be interchanged, right? Now let's run the program and see if uh, these you know, change values are actually, if these changes are actually reflected to the values of a and b in the main function or not, right? So I'll execute the program and you see that in the output window, I see before swapping the values of a and b are 10 and 5 and even after swapping the values of a and b are 10 and 5. So the changes have not been reflected. And the reason for that is that we have just passed the values of a and b. We haven't passed the addresses, right? So we're going to discuss uh, how to pass addresses in the next tutorial when we check out the call by reference method. But uh, why this method is known as call by value is 
um, we are passing values of the actual parameters to the formal parameters and whenever you make changes to the values that are there in the formal parameters that is you know uh, x and y here are formal parameters so no matter what you would do with the values of x and y to the variables x and y those changes will not be reflected to the main function right so if you want the call function to have some changes to the values that are passed to it through the calling function then you cannot use the call by value method you have to use the call by reference method and uh, we're going to check that out in the next tutorial for the time being this is all i wanted to discuss with you guys so thank you so much for watching this one i'll see you guys in the next one and uh, please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already I'll see you soon.